Welcome to the State of District 88. This ongoing segment features the news and successes of District 88, which is comprised of Addison Trail and Willowbrook High Schools. We look forward to sharing with you the great accomplishments of your hometown high schools through this program. In today's segment, we will share information about the District 88 Life Transition Program and the businesses that partner with us to help that program succeed. We also will discuss important updates regarding the SAT and ACT exams. With me today are District 88 Director of Student Services, Sam Benson, District 88 Vocational Coordinator, Christine DiRienzo, current McDonald's employee, Ahmad Sarfraz, and the owners of Sunmist Restaurant, Mr. George Avgeris and Mr. George Katsapukas. They're here to talk about the District 88 Transition Program, which helps students ages 19 to 21 learn life skills, obtain job training in a community setting, and su successfully transition to adult life. Christine, uh, we've, we've got an amazing program, and we're here today to share with our public you know, what's going on. Would you please de describe uh, the transition program, the vocational training, and just kind of give the viewer just a brief history of what we're doing in 88. Absolutely, thank you. Um, one of our main components of our transition program is vocational training, in addition to teaching our students independent living skills and um, domestic skills and um, community learning skills. With our vocational training program, what we try to do is partner with community businesses to teach students what are the skills necessary to obtain a job and also to keep a job. Um, a few years ago, most of our community business partners um, were not necessarily inside or within Addison or Villa Park, where our high schools are located. Um, we had McDonald's Corporation, Hyatt. Um, we also worked with um, some other businesses. And it was a few years ago we looked at our students and said, we need to coordinate our vocational training and also our independent living skills and work more cohesively within our communities. And at that point, we reached out to our businesses within our neighborhoods, and that's how we developed our partnership with Sun Miss Cafe, in addition to some of our other businesses within Addison, such as Caputo's um, Addison Park District, um, the child care center there, um, in addition to Centennial um, Fitness. We also partner with Fortuna's Bakery, um, Jewel, right across the street on Lake Street, we work with Addison Library in addition to a lot of other businesses in the area. Outstanding, well thank you. Uh, Mr. F. Jarris and Mr. Katsapukas, uh, we really appreciate your partnership with us and uh, obviously allowing your business to you know, allow our students to work within your environment. Uh, can you talk about what, what does that look like? How many students are working with you and you know, what do they do when they enter SunMist on a daily basis? And we have uh, right now two students. Last year we had four students. And they do a good job and we help as much as we can. And what I, customers ask us, what these kids do here? And I explain to them what the kids do here. And everybody's excited, we do that. Mm -hmm. So we're very happy with the kids. They, when they do a good job, we reward them. We tell them they did a good job. They come in, they say good morning to both of us. They're pretty nice. Excellent. Yes. What kind of jobs would our students perform at SunMet? They do bring waters when they come, the customers come in, they just bring two waters. They look at me and they want to know, I have three menus in my hands, so two. I signal them the three, they take three waters, they go to tables. When the customers leave, they take the bus pen and they clean the table. Excellent. In the beginning, we give them another job to do, pick up empty dishes when people eat in, and come to you in front of the customer and say, are you done with your meal? Yeah, they says, they pull the table, the plate out from them. So. Yeah, we different things uh, every time. The more active kids they are, they do a better job, they give them more. Excellent, so it's a beneficial program for both of us. Our kids, uh, on our part, they, they enter a work environment, and the nice thing about this Sun Mist is within our community. A lot of these kids grow up in our area, so to be able to work in your business is greatly appreciated, and you value and your customers value because they see high school students in a job training program. Uh, Sam, Christine, any, anything to add to that? Well, just to add, is, so as our students are working at Sun Mist, they're getting real life skills that they can take with them, hopefully, to be employed 
uh, when they finish with our program. So as they continue to have new responsibilities, these are all skills that, that they can work on. But we really wanted to personalize our programs based on what the students were interested in. So some students may be interested in food service. Other students might be interested like working at like a Jiffy Lube, which is another one of our locations. So Christine and her team have done a tremendous job of expanding the opportunities as our program grows, but yet it's still personalized based on the interests of the students. And so we can target where they want to go with their lives after their, their high school experience and transition program experience. Christine, if I'm a business owner in the community, I'm watching this program and I'd like to get involved, what, what would I need to do? Um, they would just need to contact me. Um, contact me or someone from our um, vocational team um, or one of our teachers at our transition program and we would love to come out and talk to you about our vocational program. Um, one thing I would love to add about vocational training and one of the benefits to all of our students is that many times you know, our business owners and one of the lovely things about SunMiss is they think, you know, we're bringing water to um, the customers. But for many of our students, they have a variety of skills and goals that our students work on. For example, maybe greeting someone or working on their speech language skills. And by being able to go to a customer and ask, are you finished with that? It's an amazing way and a very appropriate way to work on those skills outside the classroom, but in the real world. Um, and it is so nice and a wonderful opportunity for our students to work on those skills in the real community. And it's our business partners that allow us to come into their business and to give our students a safe environment to work on those skills um, because of their support for our students. So I really thank our partners for that. So George and George have created a classroom beyond our walls yes. and mm -hmm. providing their businesses a real life mm -hmm. opportunity for our right. students. And I, I really want to thank you on behalf of District 88. That's, it's helped our students grow tremendously. And we thank you that you guys are doing this for kids, you know, and we like to do anything he has to do with kids to help, we can help. Thank you Great. very much. Thank you. Today with us is uh, one of our success stories. Uh, Ahmad, I can remember first meeting Ahmad at Willowbrook High School as an energetic student uh, full of school spirit in the halls of Willowbrook. And then as Ahmad uh, transitioned to our transition program at the District 88 offices, again, one of those students every morning when you came in, he would greet you with enthusiasm and a smile. And um, it, through our transition program, through our vocational training program, Ahmad through Parents Alliance was placed in uh, the McDonald's Corporation uh, to work. Christine, could you talk about Parents Alliance before we talk to Ahmad about his experiences? Yes, we're fortunate enough to collaborate with Parents Alliance, which is an adult service agency um, who provides adult job coaching services to help support employment um, for, our, for adults um, throughout the community. So what we do is we work hand in hand with Parents Alliance to find a variety of vocational training sites we work with them on developing appropriate job coaching skills for our students. And then um, when we find appropriate placements or job sites for our students, as our students exit um, high school, then we almost like pass the baton to a Parents Alliance. And Ahmad is a client of, works with Parents Alliance, and we have worked um, collaboratively with um, that agency on this, um, obtaining and securing employment. Now, Ahmad, you've been recognized by District 88 as, you know, one of our successful students. You've been recognized by Parents Alliance for your work there, and also you were recognized by the McDonald's Corporation for being successful there. Where did you learn these skills? I mean, you're obviously successful. Where did you get this training and these skills? So, I, um, when I was in, when I came to the United States of America in 2009, I saw my grandpa and my uncles successful, and my grandma told us, she's a mom us, but she told us that, you know, when you, when you go, when you go, when you do a work, just remember that you recognize the family, you recognize your grandpa, your uncles, and you're also representing your school and the district and the country. So don't spoil that, be a pride. Let's say, you know, this is our son. He was the head of somewhere. He became the executive or anywhere. And you know, because of our, because of our families, 
all of us, I mean, I mean, especially me, I did my work. I went to, when I came to transition, I saw Mrs. DeAndre and Mr. Perkins, they taught me, they said to me, what is your goal? And I said, I want to help my family because we don't have any much. And, uh, and Mr. DeAndre knows that I kept in my goal. I worked and I was the first kid who got the job over there in my first year. So I was very lucky to have these teachers. Now, when you walk into the work site, now we just talked to the owners of SunMist about what they do for the students, but w as a student working in that environment, yes. what did you learn? I learned a lot of, I learned like, I learned a lot of things. I learned how to manage it. When, the, when we get so many people, we just need to be calmed down and then be positive. And when people are coming, just run, get the napkins, and then when the cow's getting slow and slow, you can go and you say, like I so, if you need anything else, or if you need any water, I can go and can bribe you. So you, that's the real thing. So if, if there are people out in our viewing audience who are watching this show whose students are in the transition program, yes. what would you have to say to them? I have to say to them, when your kids are working, or if in the, if they in transition if they have a job, be prepared, be positive. Don't like when you go to work, be happy. Don't I mean just leave. I mean what happening, what's going, what happening outside, don't affect do your work, and that's the main thing for us to be more important. Christine, your thoughts on this when you, you deal with, uh, how many students are in our uh, vocational program right now? We have about 37, 38 students right now. 37, 38 students and uh, all learning skills because of the, our employers and the district partnering mm -hmm. with us and giving our kids opportunities. Sam, uh, what's next for our program or what kind of things uh, would you like to add to this? Well, we're just going to continue to grow and, and uh, we have vocational coaches that are actively looking for new sites. So. Uh, pe uh, the owners like at SunMist, there's other opportunities out there with other businesses that would uh, love to partner with us. So like you said earlier, if they're interested, they could get a hold of us and we could reach out to them. But don't be surprised if one of our vocational coaches is uh, knocking at the door and saying, hey, would you be willing to partner with us? Um, and then so again, it's to continue to expand our opportunities for our kids and, and again, to personalize it so that their, their goals can be met, just like Ahmed's are being met now. And Ahmed just does such a tremendous job. Uh, we've known him for a long time, but he's very self-sufficient. I mean, he, he has his own way to get to McDonald's and back, and he's working, I think it's five hours, or five days a week, yeah, right? Yeah, five days a week. So, days. I mean, he's really a, a great example of, for all of our kids. And maybe even look at down the line, bringing Ahmed back to talk to our students, uh, they all know him now, certainly, because they've worked closely with him. But, you know, for future, future years, we bring him back and he could tell his story uh, for other students to hear. So now, just the, maybe a point we didn't really hold on to is if I'm a business owner, we don't just, District 88 just doesn't drop kids off at the door and mm -hmm. you're on your own. Right. We provide you with the students, but we also provide you with a vocational coach who we employ to support the students at your work site. So I think that's, that's important to know. If you were interested in this, we would then give a vocational coaches services to you along with our students. Right, exactly. Um, you know, as we close, anything else? We'll go around the room. Ms. DiRenzo, anything else? Um, I just can't thank enough the businesses that have partnered with us and have opened their doors to us so willingly, yes. um, like SunMist. They have, they've opened our doors and just said, come in, our business is yours, and so willingly allowed us to come in and welcomed us, um, made us feel at home like family. So thank you so very much. Ahmad, anything in closing? I want to say to everyone, every parents, please be positive when your kids are working and when they come to translation, all the kids do a very good job and hard work. Be kind to another. Mr. Algeris, Mr. Katsapoukas, any final thoughts on our partnership? It's a very good thing we're doing, and I will keep doing it. And I thank you very much for your partnership. Mr. Benson. 
just again thank you for for taking our kids in and they're learning the skills that they need and looking for continued opportunities for our kids so they meet the challenges and they step up and so it's a wonderful partnership and one of the things we're most proud of in district 88 is we've got programming for every student that walks into the district no matter where you're at what level uh, what your needs are. We feel we meet students at their need level and we provide inter interventions and support because of great faculty and, and great people within the community and I think that's what makes our community a special place. We would like to thank our business partners for their support of the transition program and we look forward to working together in the future to continue improving that program. Stay tuned and we'll be right back to share important updates regarding the SAT and ACT exams. Dear Mom, I don't know how to start saying something like this. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have gone to the party. I've entered a world I don't want to be a part of. I'm in hell, Mom. A nightmare, and I need you to help me. I'm so afraid it's too late. Everything spiraled out of control. I want to be your little girl again. I love you, Mom. I don't know where to turn. Love Dear baby girl, I wish I could have helped you. You would have never done anything, ever, for me to hate you. I just wish I could hold you in my arms and tell you it's all going to be okay. That we can just go back to the way it was. I love you, and I'd do anything to hold you in my arms one more time. Love your mom. We're joined now by Adam Sobalka, D District 88 Director of Curriculum, Instruction and Assessment, Dan Krause, the Principal of Willowbrook High School, and Mr. Michael Bolden, the Principal of Addison Trail High School. We're here today to talk about the SAT and ACT exams. A lot of changes in the state of Illinois. Uh, Adam, you want to talk about some of the changes and how it affects our kids? Sure. Uh, in the past, we've had the ACT as a part of our regular assessment schedule for, for kids. Uh, the state used to pay for a ACT for our students so they could take it for uh, college admissions. And um, this year they have decided to not fund the ACT uh, and have transitioned to uh, the SAT exam for students in the future. Now, uh, the original intent was to give the SAT this spring and we've been told that that may still be a possibility, but um, we're really waiting and seeing to whether or not we'll be able to deliver it this spring or if it's going to come in future years. So uh, because in District 88 we do value students having a uh, college entrance exam, uh, we're offering a national test at both uh, Addison Trail and Willowbrook on uh, April 9th. That's a Saturday. Students can sign up by March 4th. Uh, online and uh, we have guidance counselors available to help students sign up for that national ACT exam and we'll also be providing busing to both Addison Trail and Willowbrook so they can uh, make sure that they get to the exam and get that college entrance exam. Uh, the one change is that students will have to uh, pay because obviously the state is not paying for this exam uh, and again we can work through that with students and su students that qualify um, for a fee waiver uh, based on family income, uh, we can work through that process to where they can get that test fee waived for them. Uh, so they, we just recommend they come in and work with our guidance counselors to take care of the paperwork to get all signed up. So if I'm a parent of a junior, uh, my son or daughter will take the ACT if they sign up through their guidance counselor, uh, pay the dollars required and then the school district will provide transportation on that morning, Saturday, April 9th. Correct. Uh, okay. Great. Anything? Yeah. Like so a, because this is such a, a big change um, for our students for so many years, they've been accustomed knowing the class in front of them have always had this in-school day to take their college placement exam um, that we really want to overly communicate to our junior class that this is a change this year. Um, so we made sure we included in a, in a recent report card mailing information to our juniors about this change. 
um, and where to go sign up. Our guidance counselors have met with the junior class and reminded them. But now as, as we move closer and closer to the date, um, when our juniors are selecting their courses for next year, guidance counselors will be able to spend some time with them, uh, even have some Chromebooks and, and laptops out so students can start the application process right in school. Um, and we'll also have it available you know, at any guidance open houses that we have. Uh, I know Mr. Kraus and I have, have communicated with all of our parent groups about this change and the importance and that they do need to sign up. And, and we wanna make sure that our parents know that we still want our juniors to take this test um, and even if you're not sure about college or not, it's really important to take this opportunity to uh, take the exam to see what opportunities that exam can open uh, for their student. And so we want to make it as seamless as possible, uh, even though it's not during their regular school day, it's on a Saturday. And that's why the district was able to provide some busing for students who don't have transportation on that Saturday to come in and take the exam. So uh, any parents that have students who uh, have an IEP who is a junior and still wants the accommodations for the students will work directly with the special education department as well as uh, their counselor to make sure that all the paperwork is in so they can receive the accommodations that they need to be successful on that college placement exam. The last piece is, you know, just because the students are familiar with our buildings, we expanded the capacity for that national test date. Uh, generally, uh, those tests can be taken in a variety of different high schools in the area, but we know how important it is for our students to be comfortable in the environment, so we expanded the capacity to, um, to secure spaces for all of our juniors if they uh, register for it in each of our buildings so they can take that test. So if I just want to take the ACT alone, it's $39.50. And if I want to add the ACT writing, which is required by some colleges, then it's $56.50. What happens if I'm in a low-income situation or I, I couldn't afford it? Are there um, waivers available through the federal government for this program? Yeah. Um, our guidance counselors have uh, fee waiver uh, forms that students will have to work through with them. Um, but there are codes that are assigned to each student, and so they need to come into our guidance office and our counselors can work through that application with them. Okay, so that's the ACT, and how about the SAT? Any word, I know Dan, you remember the Illinois Principals Association mm -hmm. uh, Board, any word from anybody at the table on, do we know if the state's gonna pay for an SAT? The, uh, the deadlines are coming fast with the budget impasse and not having funding secured uh, for a college entrance exam. Uh, it's, it's looking, unfortunately, unlikely that we'll be able to administer the exam this year. Um, but in the future, obviously, transitioning the SAT is a change for our state. You know, we've become very familiar in the Midwest with the ACT. But certainly the College Board and the SAT uh, products seemingly uh, provide a lot of flexibility and information for our students in the future. And it makes sense why the state of Illinois may have chosen them now as a as a provider for a college entrance exam for all students. Um, we have become now one of nine or 10 different states across the state, uh, across the country that would be providing this uh, free of charge for all students. And their suite of um, products that they provide in addition to the advanced placement coursework that we offer um, extensively throughout District 88 in both of our buildings, links nicely for our students. So we see this as a transition, but obviously looking forward to the resources that are available through the SAT. Now, we've got the ACT. We're all covered there for this spring. <laughs> We're unsure on the SAT. We know that we'll prepare within the system to get kids ready for the SAT. How about PARC? Any general comments on the PARC for this spring? It's not going away for this year. I know the state's got a, a few more years left on that PARC contract, but what's next as far as PARC's concerned this spring? So um, in the spring, we'll be giving the uh, PARC exam to our students in English 9. Uh, that's the English Language Arts exam and then algebra and uh, most of our algebra students are grade 9 students uh, we will be given the park uh, on April 12th and 13th at Aston Trail and April 19th and 20th at Willowbrook um, for both of those subjects and uh, we'll be doing the computer-based version so it'll be taken online and then in addition uh, the state has required a science assessment for students in biology um, and this may include students in AP biology, but we're still awaiting clarification on which students exactly uh, taking which biology courses are gonna be selected for this exam. Uh, but again, that's a computer-based exam. Um, they estimate about 90 minutes in length, and uh, we'll, so we're supposed to take it in uh, late April uh, in May or in, into May, but again, we don't have really any uh, guidance from the state to exactly the time frames or what this exam is going to look like. Final thoughts from the building assessment ACT, SAT, PARC. 
Uh, you know, if you to talk with students and parents of your respective buildings, Mike, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I just want, you know, communicating this with our parents, so one of the big concerns was, you know, will all the colleges accept an SAT when they move to that? And so, you know, we've reassured the parents that the ACT and SAT are the two big college placement exams, and all, all colleges will accept one or, one or another. There are the occasion that, you know, prefer or want an SAT test, so um, any students who are applying to specific universities need to check those universities, but um, we know the ACT test will be appropriate for juniors this year, and moving forward with the SAT, it will also be uh, a common score for all students throughout the country. And we're confident with the work we've been doing throughout the district, especially across the two buildings of aligning our curriculum, uh, making sure that each of the classroom environments we have are rigorous in preparation, not just for uh, standardized tests, but for any type of learning environment beyond high school. So, you know, regardless of which exam our students take, we know that they're going to be well prepared. Uh, we also know that um, there's a multitude of other measures that we have in place that help us monitor student growth over the period of time they're with us, and most importantly, getting them prepared for life beyond high school. So, you know, while transition from ACT to SAT and having PARC and a science assessment uh, means that our students will be sitting in front of um, outside exams, we know they'll be, they'll be well prepared, and we know that that's just an additional component for them in their high school career. Um, and most importantly for us, that making sure that our classroom environments um, provide a great preparation for that, and then most, and, and then also utilizing that information to make improvements along the way. Well, I appreciate each and every person at this table. Our leaders, uh, many people don't know this, but last year we really fought the fight to move testing away from the juniors because we had our ACT. We'd asked the state to move park, and they moved park at the last minute allowed us to test freshmen. And uh, this was an end of course assessment for freshmen. So it was algebra one. So we lost any freshman who was moving in beyond algebra to geometry. And then freshmen who weren't enrolled in ELA nine did not take that. So it's an end of the course assessment. And we thought your buildings and your leadership teams adjusted and delivered a test, you know, first time out and all online. So adapting to the technology and, and I just want to say thank you for your leadership and thanks for supporting the students and families of District 88. Thank you for joining us and be sure to tune in again during our next segment of the State of District 88, which will air right here on ACTV. To stay up to date with the great things happening in District 88, visit our website at dupage88.net where you can sign up for our electronic newsletter and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you. feel about your commute these days? A little crabby? You can change that pretty easily. Just take pace and feel happy as a clam. The savings will be a big change too. Travel in a more relaxing pace. Dear Mom, I don't know how to start saying something like this. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have gone to the party. I've entered a world I don't want to be a part of. I'm in hell, Mom. I'm a nightmare, and I need you to help me. I'm so afraid it's too late. Everything spiraled out of control. I want to be your little girl again. I love you, Mom. I don't know where to turn. Love Dear baby girl, I wish I could have helped you. You would have never done anything, ever, for me to hate you. I just wish I could hold you in my arms and tell you it's all going to be okay. That we can just go back to the way it was. I love you, and I'd do anything to hold you in my arms one more time. Love your mom. We're going to talk today and visit with representatives of the Addison Police Department a very important topic and that is the proper use and installation of child safety seats. If you're a parent, grandparent, a caregiver, older sibling perhaps, uh, someone who at any point 
would be transporting a child around in your own vehicle, this is going to be very important information. And we do want to remind you that it's important that when you do have a child safety seat to make sure that it's installed properly, you read the directions, and if you need help, there's places where you can go and get that help right here in Addison. So we're joined by uh, Community Response Officer Emilio Chepetta and Community Service Officer John Gilpin from the Addison Police Department. Guys, thank you very much for, for coming in today. Well, John, I know this is something that you work with on a daily basis, I would imagine, pretty close to that. The statistics are staggering, and I wonder if you could share them with our audience about how often something as, as critical and as important as a child safety seat is not installed properly within a person's vehicle. Between about 70 and 80 percent of child seats are installed incorrectly according to uh, the yeah. National Highway Transportation Safety Administration. So that's a large amount of, of seats to be put in incorrectly. So it puts the children at risk. And we are really talking about something that is a, a life or death or critical injury uh, uh, situation here. It can be easily prevented if you know what you're doing. And I will admit, having gotten out of this era, but you know, just take a look around the back here. I'll, I'll, for those who've never seen one of these things, particularly in the back, there's lots of latches and belts and parts to it. And I can remember, you know, putting this in, and I'm sure a lot of people in our audience can recall, and you're frustrated and you don't have a lot of time and you're in a hurry, so you just kind of make it happen. The problem is that could be very serious because it's not what the manufacturer intended correct. to be installed. That, right? That's correct. I mean, and, and you know, there, there are plenty of stickers on the side that explain how to install the seat, but I can see where it would be overwhelming to some people. But there is help out there. You can contact most of your local police departments and fire departments, or you can go to uh, safekids.org, and they will point you in the right direction to get a car seat installed correctly. Um, not every car seat is the same, just like every kid is not the same. Uh, vehicles, obviously, have something to do with it, too. So we're talking about seats that can go from for a, you know an infant newborn na 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 up into into the years in, in some cases do you, do you have any idea how how often you deal with car seats where they're just there's a variety of them is uh, that i mean there's challenging for people it, it's challenging because there's so many different car seats out there and there's so many different cars and it's they don't necessarily make car seats for <laughs> specific cars that's true so you know it, you know seats are different uh, car seats and child seats are so different that sometimes they just don't always fit correctly and you have to figure out how to get that in there the best way right so there's no real um specific seat for every specific car so you just got to figure it out right right um We'll talk about the help you had just mentioned that you can get help from the police department. We'll do that in just a moment. Emilio, let's talk about the enforcement issue. If you were up in an area, let's say near one of the schools perhaps, and you know you were to see that kids aren't uh, properly buckled into the car, in the car seat or whatever, this is something a driver could, could be cited for, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Is that common? Do you see that happening? You know, in the community and just your regular patrols? Well, the last several years, years I'm sorry, uh, we've been monitoring the school systems for uh, these, these issues yeah. and we're overwhelmed by the amount of uh, unrestrained child that are, um, that are being transported mm -hmm. to school or picked up from school where there isn't any child system, uh, child restraint system. Uh, they're just simply getting into the car and they're, and they're just driving off. Are they even in seatbelts? Uh, no, most of the time that they're not. So what we like to do is like to reach out to the public um, if they do need uh, their child seat uh, installed properly right. um, to give us a call. Right. We have a service text that will be more than happy to install it properly. Right. Um, occasionally the police department will get grants, usually they're state grants, to um, to do roadside safety checks for a variety of, of issues. Yes. Uh, you do several of them in a year. Is this something that occasionally you are checking for if it's appropriate with that vehicle? If you see that maybe kids aren't restrained properly, you know, somebody could get cited for that too? One of the things we do look at is when we are speaking with, with the public is mm -hmm. we'll look at the, the seat to see if it is a properly uh, fastened seat. If it's not, we'll direct them how to, to, uh, to install it properly. If, if they don't want to do that, again, they can call one of the departments and uh, who installs the seats and they'll be more than happy to do it for them. So let's just mention again, school zones particularly, although I guess it could happen just about anywhere, but in school zones where kids are going to be there and lots of times young kids are going to be there too, um, you, the police department would be out and monitoring and, and enforcing uh, the kids being installed properly in a child safety seat. Right? Yes, in the future we're also going to have the campaign uh, for that specific reason. So we would like, again, to reach out and uh, try to educate the yeah. public. 
Well, John, then let's talk about what Emilio just mentioned, that there is the opportunity that uh, a resident could come to the police department and talk about how that works, uh, how long does it take, and the appointment uh, process. And, and so well, what do you folks do for that? We, we do. Uh, we do request people call and make an appointment as you know we're not always available sometimes we're on the street and, um, so we definitely recommend that they call and make an appointment most of the time that will be through me um, but you know once they do that we'll set up a time when when it's convenient for for both of us and um, realistically it takes approximately a half hour to get this done depending okay. on the vehicle sometimes less sometimes a little bit more but you know generally about a half hour and you know we, a lot of what we do is education we don't just grab the seat right. and put it in and mm -hmm. say have a nice day. Because that's not going to help the, the no. motorists and so the we, parent we, at all. What yeah. we do is education so we want them to know and understand all the features of the seat mm -hmm. and we explain to them how it works and, and why it's important that it's in, incorrectly. So um, it's a realistic about a half hour they in and out. Do you suggest at least maybe for the first time that a that, uh, a motorist, a parent, whomever they might be, gets the car seat, go ahead and, and seek out help from the police department the first time so they maybe learn right yeah. away than trying to, as I said earlier, you just kind of make it fit. And that's yeah. not safe because that's know, not the right yeah, way if, to do it. If you're not good with you know, with directions and, you know, it, sometimes people learn better by being shown as opposed to trying to figure it out on their own. So sure. it's either or. If you get a seat and you want to try and put it in and you think it's done correct, mm -hmm. that's great. You can always call us and just say, I just want it checked. I put it in, but I just oh, want okay. to make sure it's correct. Mm -hmm. We don't always have to install it. If you've done it, you can just, you know, hey, just check this to make sure it's incorrectly. And we do that as well. But right. um, it, yeah, it, either, either way, it doesn't, you know, mm -hmm. if you're confident in putting in your own seat, go ahead and do it. And what are the laws or the, the, the regulations when it comes to this? The age, range, weight? I, I've, I've heard both. I, it, does it, it I, I know it matters. I'm just yeah. not quite sure which one you would go by, by the weight of the child or age. You, usually it's going to be the age um, because, you know, every child weighs different. But mm -hmm. usually at least eight years old, you have to be into a car seat um, or some kind of booster seat. Uh, up until until eight, eight years old? Yes. Really? Um, you know, past that, you're going to have to be in, in a regular seat belt. Mm -hmm. But realistically, if you're a smaller child, you can be 10, 11, 12 years old. And if you still fit in a booster seat properly, you can stay in that seat. It's, it's you know, it's safer to be in some sort of restraint as long as you fit in it properly. Um, but realistically, anywhere from birth up until eight years old, you're going to be in some form of a child safety seat. You mentioned booster seat. That's obviously a little different than this. Is, is the benefit there the height that they're and, sitting and that's up what a little higher? Because with some booster seats, you're still going to use this harness. Um, you know, oh, okay. seat belt, well, right. As you get a little bit older, you end up using the seat belt that's built into the car. Sure. And what the booster seat does is it raises you up a little bit so that seat, when it comes across you, it comes across properly. So it's not coming across your cheek mm -hmm. or, you know, too low. So that's what the booster seat does. It, it you know, lifts you up enough to where the seat belt is, is doing its job and protecting you. Right. Uh, John, how does a person get a hold of the police department? What's the best way to go about reaching out to you if they want to make a, uh, an appointment to have the seat checked? They can just call our, our non-emergency number okay. at 630-543-3080 and just let them know that they want to schedule a car seat appointment. And there will be uh, events out in the community. I know there's a big campaign drive coming yes. up. Yes. Uh, Emilio, you had mentioned yes. that people can partake in. Usually these are free of charge. You come out, you get the car seat or go buy one shop locally here in Addison of course buy your car seat or your booster seat and then somebody from the police department who's certified to do this will actually check it right on the spot correct we do several events a year we're, we're gonna start doing more um, but yes you can come to our event it'll be posted on our website okay and they may do it in the, uh, the community letter mm -hmm. um, and you'll be able to just come in you know you don't you won't need an appointment you just show up at the event and We'll uh, install your seat or check it for you. And and don't think that, you know, oh, I can figure this out myself here. If you do have questions, that's what these ladies and gentlemen are here for, is to make sure that it's done correctly. So, uh, you know, better to make certain the first time to avoid any problems and make certain that you reach out and find to make sure that you have the proper seat for your child, the safety seat, the booster seat, whatever it might be, and that it's installed properly in your vehicle, plus anybody else who may be transporting your child, neighbors, friends, parents, grandparents, older siblings, as I said, these are things you want to take the time to think about before you need to deal with it uh, in a more urgent matter later. Uh, Emilio, John, thank you very much from thank the Addison you. Police Department. And uh, reach out to the police department. You can contact them, 630-543-3080, or look them up online and uh, get more information on the proper installation and use of a child safety seat. Thanks, guys, for being thank with you. us today. Thanks.